little gavels and uh, bring it here. Well, you know, I'm glad that, yeah, that's, I've been thinking about that a lot. Yeah. yeah. How do you come to order? So, uh, the former legislators are in search of gavels right now. If anybody has one, you can bring them. But we have difficulty <laughs> starting without that, without that. Um, so this is the uh, housing committee for Wednesday, August 28th, 2013. We are in room 1060, City Hall. It is uh, 135, consistent with our adjusted time. And I thank uh, members Fuentes and Buscaino for being here. We have quorum, and we are prepared to start. Okay. Mr. Chair, Clay McCarter with the CLA's office. The description for item one is incorrect. I just would like yes. to read the corrected description into the record. It's a CAO report relative to authorization for the Los Angeles Housing and Community Investment Department to execute a fourth amendment to contract number C-118528 with Urban Futures, Inc., for monitoring services for an additional amount of 240000 for the term beginning July 1st, 2013 through December 31st, 2013. Is that the correct language? Yes, sir. Yes. Good afternoon, Council Members. Madeline Rackley with the CAO. Um, uh, the Housing and Community Investment Department did submit a request to negotiate a sole source agreement with Urban Futures Incorporated for um, occupancy monitoring services uh, on the advice of the city attorney um, and with the concurrence of the housing department we are recommending amending the current uh, contract for proposed fourth amendment while the housing department issues a new request for proposals following the city's RFP process um, so this would extend the term of the contract from July 1st 2013 through the end of the year and the contract amount would be for up to two hundred and forty thousand dollars and that would be paid for by home and municipal uh, housing finance fund uh, monies um, the current contract would then uh, have a total amount of 1.5 million attached to it and since the contract would then extend past the city's three-year term limit council then needs to approve the uh, extension of the, the term beyond three years um, so uh, the CAO recommends that the housing uh, department uh, be able to amend the uh, fourth uh, to be able to execute the fourth amendment to contract number C 118528 with Urban Futures Incorporated to extend the term for six months subject to review of the city attorney as to form and compliance with the city's contracting requirements and there is no impact to the general fund. The housing department is also here in case you have any questions. Good. Good afternoon, council members. I'm Lamont Olat. I'm financial development officer. I'm acting manager of our occupancy monitoring section. Hello. Thank you for being here. Any questions from the committee? Not for me. No. no, thank you. We, we appreciate the clarity extending this till uh, December while we prepare the RFP and continue on our good work. Thank you. Thank you. Correct? Thank you. Item two is a city attorney report and ordinance relative to amending the Los Angeles Administrative and Municipal Code to redesignate the Los Angeles Housing Department as the Los Angeles Housing and Community Investment Department and to transfer administration of human services programs and commissions from the Community Development Department to the H. C-I-D-L-A. Okay. Anybody here to speak on that? Anybody here from housing or the new department? How's this going? Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the committee, Rushmore Cervantes with the Housing Committee Investment Department. Uh, the transition is going well. Uh, before you is just uh, uh, the ordinance to codify what the uh, mayor and council had approved uh, during the last budgetary cycle that took place July 1st. And uh, the departments have uh, merged, uh, and we are actively uh, looking at uh, synergies and opportunities to engage in collaborative efforts with the new Economic Development Department and HCIDLA. So if the transition is going well, and uh, I can answer any questions you may have regarding the ordinance. Questions? I'm ready to approve. How's, how are the uh, changes going on 
Are you engaging your collective bargaining units in here and making sure that they're comfortable with the changes? Uh, at this point, the members of the, both departments have uh, retained their existing work locations with the exceptions of one or two. Um, uh, we have not uh, had any uh, ongoing discussions with uh, union representatives as, re as a result of any kind of job changes at this point. We're open to that. Uh, at this point, any staff that's been reassigned is consistent with their classifications. Okay. So we're assuming no problems until we're here. Uh, we have not seen any uh, or heard of any issues at, at this point. Uh, down the line, we anticipate that we will be moving staff uh, within the Garland building, which is the headquarters, as well as some of the field staff, perhaps. But uh, at this point, uh, we have not encountered any issues. Great. Okay. Motion? Yeah, move to approve. Second. Move, second. That's it. Item number three is a motion Buscano Wesson relative to earmarking $3.95 million in unallocated 39th year community development block grant funds for the Jordan Downs housing project. Okay. Can we hear from uh, Housing Authority? Thank you, council members, um, and thank you especially for entertaining uh, this motion and for also for your full support of the recently approved uh, site-specific plan for this major redevelopment effort uh, at Jordan Downs. Uh, this motion uh, is important because it's, it's a very important piece of uh, application for principal financing for Jordan Downs. Uh, that we're going forward with. This is uh, uh, an application for funding uh, under the Choice Neighborhood Initiative program that HUD has. It's a national competition. Uh, we're going to be going in requesting a grant of $30 million. Uh, and this is really the critical financial component of a very complex uh, redevelopment effort at Jordan Downs and, and something which uh, has, has taken many years to get to this point. Uh, so uh, that application is going to be due on September 10th, and again, it's a very important part of that application, uh, which is going to be extremely competitive on a national basis. Uh, also joining me up here is a member of the development team to speak uh, uh, just for a few minutes uh, in a little more detail. Thank you. Good afternoon, Councilman. Um, first of all, we're very pleased to be here and be before you requesting um, the significant component of the CNI application, which is a commitment from the city for $3.95 million of CDBG funds over the next five years. So these funds, I think it's very important to share with you that these funds will leverage over $260 million of other financing, which at a ratio of $1 CDBG to nearly $100 of leverage dollars, which is significant. So it's a critical component. It's actually a requirement for particular points within the CNI application. So this is, this is why we're asking for it, um, and it will help us be truly competitive in a challenging um, competition throughout the country. Uh, those funds will be used primarily uh, as part of the transformation plan for Jordan Downs to build a park. We, have, we will have eight acres of park space, open space, ball fields, a 50,000 square foot community center, um, and the realignment of the bus, I think it's 117? Century Boulevard. Yep, along Century Boulevard. So these are very important components to the overall redevelopment effort, and we are very pleased to be here before you to request your approval and recommendation of this $3.95 million in CDBG funds. Um, just a quick background. Um, I'm Whitney Weller, Senior Vice President with the Michaels Development Company, and we are partnered with Bridge Housing as the master developer of the Jordan Downs redevelopment effort. And we were procured by the Housing Authority about a year and a half ago. We, Michaels is a national affordable housing developer, 40 years in this business, 50 plus thousand mixed income and public housing redeveloped units. Bridge, of course, is the lead nonprofit affordable housing developer in the state of California. So bringing sort of that national expertise and local expertise and knowledge together is really creating a dynamic team to help move this project forward. And it's really the vision and all of the work that HACLA and the community have done since, um, you know, in the past three years. I do want to acknowledge that we have members of the Jordan Downs Central Advisory Council and residents here with us today. Hey. <laughs> who 
who have really put a lot of time, I mean years of time and effort into this vision, and we as a developer are here to, you know, pull it out and bring it forward. Uh, the basic elements are 1,400 new units of mixed income housing, a robust uh, social services and job workforce program, you know, program strategy, 100,000 square feet of commercial space. Our partner is Prime Store Development, who is very pleased and is a, really a terrific asset to this team. 50,000 square foot community center and you know significant open space. So those are the primary components. We've made a lot of progress to date, as as um, Doug has acknowledged. So we're again we're here today to ask for your recommendation of this CDBG commitment. Okay. Public comment on this item. I have a question. Yes. So uh, can you help me understand sort of the CNI process? What, so the NOFA came out this year. When, when, when did it come In out? Late May. And so what is sort of the timeline for uh, knowing where we, uh, the timeline for the, for the process and sort of your uh, estimation as to our chances sort of nationally uh, to compete? Well, I'll tell you, first of all, the time frame. It's due on September 10th. What happens is, is then HUD reviews. <clears throat> so it, last year they received 42 applications, so we can assume they're going to uh, receive at least 42, maybe more, from around the country. They'll take probably several months to review those applications, and then they arrange for site visits. So they will be out here probably in late fall, early winter to see the site, meet with all of the partners, and then they go back to Washington and they make their final decision. We expect to hear probably in early spring whether we've been selected. We believe that Jordan Downs and the City of Los Angeles have an excellent chance of, of obtaining these dollars because there's been a lack of federal funds coming into L.A., particularly, of course, in the Watts area. Um, that's something HUD looks at. They look at you know, funding programs sort of um, geographically. There hasn't been a lot out here in the West, so I think that will bode strongly. We have spent, again, with the time that HACLA and the community and JDCAC have spent the past three years preparing for this, really everything that they've done has prepared us for this point in time, for September 10th. So we've been able to pull all of that together, and it's a very strong application. Very good. Thank you. I'm happy to move the item. Yes. A quick question. Yes, I, I, too, I think it's an excellent project. Uh, and I certainly applaud the councilman for his uh, leadership pushing this through. Question about 3.9, 3. <clears throat> that is uh, over five years. Correct. Is it divided by five, or is it going to draw down, you know, $3 million one year and, and the rest over four years, or how does that work? That's still... And, oh. and, the, uh, and the commitment that we are, that you're requesting goes toward the application. If the application is unsuccessful, is that, I guess that money goes back into the block grant pot, or what, what's... That's what correct. This is dependent on receiving the CNI grant. Uh, the, and how these funds? It, the funds can be, over yeah, the they can be, it, it really depends <laughs> on the availability of the funds uh, what and what we when we need them. So we can time it if there's a timing issue. It's really based on what's the availability and the timing of the park, the open space, and um, the bus reconfiguration. So that will determine whether or not you, you, you try to draw down right. half of it or exactly. a quarter of it or some exactly. portion of it. Exactly, yeah. As needed basis. Yeah, as needed basis. Thank you. Right. Yeah. I'll second the motion. Awesome. <coughs> yeah, motion. We need some uh, public comment. I'll speak after the public comment. Yeah. Uh, John Frank Hernandez. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, come on, brother. Just walk up, seat, give us your comment. And you get a time. Right? Thank you. Good afternoon, and thank you for this time. Uh, my name is John Frank Hernandez. I currently am a, a, one of the original members of the Jordan Downs Community Advisory Committee. I've been a part of this uh, great grand project for the last five to six and a half years. Uh, this is very important for the community of Watts, uh, not just in, most importantly for the residents of the Jordan Downs as well. Uh, therefore, I am in favor of the allocation for this uh, amendment or this line item currently that is uh, being proposed. Uh, I speak from experience as well because I'm currently employed with the agency that is providing direct services right now for the uh, community members of the Jordan Downs. Uh, 
so we're talking about something that will redevelop it, not only redevelop the community at large, but uh, we are talking about transforming residents' lives. We're talking about transforming a notion and a type of atmosphere that has been, for whatever reason, uh, neglected. And this is uh, absolutely one of the most important things that is happening right now in our community so far. Uh, so with respect to you all, gentlemen, uh, this is something that is being pushed for not only by the residents but the community at large in Watts and the Jordan Downs. Uh, this is going to bring grand opportunity. Uh, this is not only going to bring transformation, again, to the community of the uh, Jordan Downs, but transformation of the residents' uh, lives. Uh, we're talking about the children, the families, mothers and fathers. And this is something that is uh, absolutely important. And uh, we hope that uh, we will get uh, the community of Watts will receive the CNI. Thank you very much. Right, thank you. So, Coro Diaz. Welcome. Hi, everybody. Hey. Hi, my name is Socorro Diaz, and I am a resident of the Jordan Downs. I have been there um, going on eight years, and I've been highly involved in the community for the past four going on five years. And um, when I first uh, heard about the redevelopment, I was like, let me go see what this is all about, you know, because they promise and they always say they're going to do this and they're going to do that, and nothing comes through. Mm. So I remember I went to the first meeting, and I'm not going to lie to you. I was like, I'm here for my Subway sandwich, and I'm out of here. You know, because I'm like, they're all blah, blah, blah. And chips. But, you know, as I started getting more involved and coming to the meetings and meeting other people and working with them, it has totally changed my life. I was unemployed. Now I'm employed. And, you know, I'm highly involved in the community changing people's lives and I've seen people grow we have a senior that she thought her life was over and she just graduated from our GED program and she was crying when she got her high school diploma so these are transformations that are happening you know basically underwater because once we get the redevelopment it's going to be more out in the open and I think that you know you think about three point million dollars or three million dollars that's a lot of money but when you talk about people that are living far below poverty that's nothing how can you put a price on a on a human capital basically because money goes and comes yes it does and it and it helps a lot but how can you just value like oh how are we gonna put just this money we need more than that to be honest with you that's for me when you hear that amount, that's a lot of money, but then when you think about what it's going to do, it's a little bit of money. You know, we have families that sometimes don't have a meal, you know, that we have to go to the neighbors, knock on the door and say, can I have some tortillas? And, you know, and this is going to change our lives because as we're talking about the redevelopment, people are wanting to change. So two minutes is not enough time for me to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to have to come back. <laughs> you come back. Come back anytime. Okay, we have uh, Thalmi, Thalmi Perez. Good morning, House Good morning and good afternoon. Nice to see fresh faces here. Rise and it's been shine. a while since I've been to this committee. My name is Thelmi Perez. I'm the coordinator with the LA Human Rights Housing Collective. Um, I'm here representing a citywide effort to organize public housing residents. We currently have um, a public housing committee, which represents over nine of the 14 public housing communities. I'm here on their behalf, as well as a renter, um, and on behalf of low-income renters in Los Angeles. We are really excited that the city is looking to leverage funding for public housing. I think that it's very important for the city to partner with the housing authority to make sure that our public housing sites are, um, are both viable, are healthy, are receiving services. Um, so we're really excited about that. However, um, with this plan that's being proposed for the Choice Neighborhoods Initiative, we do have some concerns over the long term of the displacement of tenants. So we really want to encourage you to encourage the Housing Authority to make sure that there is a goal for retaining the current tenants and make sure that the current tenants have um, all the resources that, resources that they need to be able to remain in good standing or to, be, or to um, move to good standing if they're currently not so that they have a place in the new development. Um, we also want to encourage you 
to continue to leverage resources from the city for public housing and services for public housing residents. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, we have uh, Steve Diaz. committee members. My name is Steve Diaz and I am with the Right to Housing Collective in LA Can. Uh, I echo the comment of Tommy. It's a great idea for the city to invest in public housing. It's a much needed resource in the city's housing stock and it's a great opportunity to take action. Yet there are some pressing questions that remain around the Jordan Downs redevelopment project, specifically around potential long-term <coughs> excuse me, potential long-term displacement of tenants in the Jordan Down project and the ability of current tenants to be able to meet the federal requirements to be able to return back to the units once the project is done. Meaning that tenants who are currently in there who, for example, might be what are called mixed income households because of credit, some federal regulations might not meet the ability to come back into the new redevelopment project. So the Housing Authority you should answer these questions now as to are those tenants going to be displaced, what's going to happen, and that's just one example of many that remain, of many questions that remain unanswered at Jordan Downs. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, for example, uh, so the city is about to allocate into the CNI process. Uh, the CNI process is originally supposedly only going to be for 700 units. Uh, it's being publicized that only 470 of those are going to be actually potential public housing units. So what's going to happen with the other 200 and some units that are there in Jordan Downs? What, is, uh, what system is the, is the housing authority going to take to ensure that the other units that are put in place are accessible by extremely low income housing tenants because they're going to be tax credit and market rate units, which t most tenants who currently live there in a community that has about 70% unemployment will not be able to access. Thank you. questions uh, yes council member congratulations thank you uh, mr. chair and thank you colleagues for your kind uh, words of support in, in moving this uh, process forward so we can apply for the CNI I am um, so excited to be a part of this um, collaboration between the community the city family and Hacka Hakla uh, I want to thank the members of the public for coming to speak Sokoto I love your energy Thank you so much uh, for continuing to fight for the residents in Jordan Downs. This is long overdue. I see John King in the audience who's just been a champion on the ground uh, representing Hakla and being the, um, the go-to guy for uh, the residents. Um, thank you for um, the process and thank you, John, for your commitment. And of course, Mr. Guthrie and uh, the development team for moving this forward. We're at a, at a point, colleagues, that we can now move from the planning stage uh, to the doing stage and making sure this development moves forward. Um, Hackland and the development team, as you heard, have been hard, uh, hard at work preparing for a very competitive, I repeat, this is a competitive application for federal funding uh, to help kick, us, kick off this project. And we know we have, we have some friends in D.C. that we need to knock on their doors uh, with uh, Congress uh, members Hahn, Waxman, uh, Congressman uh, Cardenas, um, Congresswoman Maxine Waters. Bass. It's incumbent, yes, uh, Congress member Bass. It's incumbent upon us to, um, and I know they're going to be a champion for us in D.C. We really need to work with them and, and help us uh, get this um, award. Uh, Watts is getting um, ready for this big leap. Uh, we, are, um, uh, we need the whole city, um, our, our colleagues from all levels of government to support us in this. I do have a technical um, mm -hmm. revision. I know you mentioned it, Mr. Chair. If, uh, I, I believe, Mr. Kirk, do you want me to read it for the record? Do you want to read it for the record? Or? Can oh, you can. Um, and, and it's just base, it's just the, um, what, what we're doing is just committing uh, to dedicate 7.5% of the city's CDBG funding allocation for this uh, transformation plan. Um, if you want, I'll just give this to you. And calculated based on this year's allocation, the, the dollar figure is $3.95 million. And if we, uh, we are awarded the $30 million grant, HACLA and the development team will come back to us with a five-year CB 
CDBG budget and spending plan, which will not exceed $3.95 million. I see Mr. Guthrie nodding his head and the development team as well. So with that, um, Mr. Clerk, if you can read it to the record. Richard Williams, City Clerk. Uh, pursuant to Department of Housing, pardon me, uh, we are amending the motion Buscana Wesson to delete instructions one and two and approve the following four new recommendations. Number one, pursuant to the Department of Housing and Urban Development regulations, commit a total of 7.5% of one year's annual CDBG allocation, estimated to be $3.95 million to support the $30 million choice neighborhood initiative grant application for the Jordan Downs housing project. And upon award of the grant, funds shall be provided from unallocated funds, savings, or any future year CDBG allocation within the five-year life of the CNI grant. Number two, request the Jordan's Down grant development team with the assistance of the Housing Authority of the City of Los Angeles upon award of the CNI grant, prepare and submit a five-year CDBG budget and funding request to the Mayor and Council for the Jordan Downs project to comply with the CNI grant. Number three, request the Housing Authority to submit to Council a status report for the Jordan Downs project, including a project timeline and all funding sources and uses. And number four, request the mayor's office and the housing authority to notify the council upon award of the CNI grant. So just technical uh, amendments that we need to be aware of the process and not be excluded from the process, specifically when, of course, if and when we get this, this grant. Um, so I ask for your support in moving this forward to council uh, so we can, again, just take one step further into uh, getting these, these, uh, this grant funds from the federal government. And thank you, Eric Brown, as well, for being here and your ongoing leadership with HACLA and with the community as well. We need move the item as amended. Moved as amended. We need a placeholder for thank Tuesday. You. Thank you. Okay, we're good. Congratulations. This is, I will tell you, um, the word is out on the street about this change, and so there's excitement throughout the city. So other residents of other projects are now coming to me quietly. <laughs> Senor Cedillo. And not so quiet. And not so quiet. <laughs> Quiero lo mismo de Jordan Downs. <laughs> <laughs> so your leadership is, is uh, you. being heard throughout the city. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so Thank congratulations. You. Thank you. Motion moved. All right. Yep. Approved. Approved. Thank you. Item number four is a HCIDLA report relative to approval of the establishment of a rent escrow account program rehabilitation loan pilot program to assist landlords to make necessary repairs to their properties in REAP. Where's the uh, committee, or the staff? Either one can come. Good afternoon. Roya Babazade from HCID. Uh, this program is designed uh, to assist property owners that they have small-scale properties in REAP that, with persistent violations that uh, keep the property in REAP and the property owners lack the uh, access to capital to do the work. They have the willing to do the work but lack uh, access to the capital. And uh, we developed this program based on the motion presented by, by Council Member Wesson and uh, the program is provide financial assistance in the form of a loan. The loan is a simple interest, low, low interest uh, loan deferred payment that can be paid uh, in 15 years or at the time that the property is sold or transferred or refinanced. The intention of the program is to uh, raise the uh, revenue for the property owner, rental income, 200%, restore it 200% so they can be able to maintain the property and uh, fix the property, remove the violations, bring the um, condition of the properties to a habitable and safe environment for the tenants. 
uh, have sufficient uh, rental income to continue maintaining the program and remove the property from RIP. The other intention of the program is to provide community investment on uh, units that are affordable. These properties are con uh, in RIP and also uh, subject to RSO. And uh, most of them are rather old properties in need of investment and rehabilitation. Uh, we designed the program based on a requirement uh, to ensure that we capture the property owners that have uh, small-scale properties, six units or less. These six units can be in one or two parcel. Property owner uh, reside in one of the units. And these property owners have financial difficulties. They have, they're either at or below 100% AMI. They try to get commercial loan, but they fail to secure that, and therefore their need to uh, this public money is established. If you have any questions about the program, design of the program, I'll be happy to uh, answer that. But uh, one uh, transmittal is uh, formed. Later on, we amended the transmittal to remove the uh, source of funding. Uh, at this point, we are uh, requesting a committee to approve the design and requirement of the program. And uh, we are hoping that we work with CEO and with the offices to identify a proper funding source for the program. Great. How long do the uh, properties have to be in the REAP uh, program before they're actually eligible for the loan? Uh, the report says here that you've got about 200 or so eligible properties and we're only going to fund about 10% of those. So how do you, how do you understand who's sort of at the top of the queue? Uh, this is a pilot program. Uh, uh, based on that, we uh, want to uh, test uh, a percentage of these properties. We identified about 200 properties qualifying for this program. But uh, pilot is designed to address uh, about 20 of these properties. So are those the properties that have been on the list the longest, the 20, or how, how are you selecting the 20? We are selecting based on requirement of the income of the owner, uh, being eligible for mom and pop, qualifying for mom and pop, six un owning only six units or less. The property is in RIP having violations cited by housing inspectors and uh, possibly by county health uh, inspectors. The property has been in RIP for uh, more than one year. The reason for that requirement is the, uh, to take away the incentive to let the property to go to RIP to take advantage of this program. Very good. Thank you. Councilmember. Thank you uh, for the presentation. I know you don't know where the money is going to be coming from, but how much do you anticipate needing to, to create a program like this? We identified 1.1 million uh, to serve about uh, 20 properties. One million directly goes to the uh, service, uh, to the loans, and 100,000 of it would be at uh, cost of administration of the program. And what kind of interest rate uh, are the you proposing rate for this? It is 3% uh, uh, simple annual interest. Investment, rehab. But the payment is deferred uh, to the time that the property, either 15 years of property sold, refinanced, or transferred title. The, the, the repayment? Yeah, the there is no monthly payment. Uh, the full repayment is uh, deferred to 15 years. Um, okay, so let's. Uh, I didn't cut you off, did I? Roya Babazade. I said I didn't cut you off, did I? No, not at all. I thought you missed my name. It's not an easy name. <laughs> Let's hear from the uh, public. Uh, let's begin with Michael Millman. Thank you. Good evening. Good afternoon. Michael Millman, M-I-L-L-M-A-N. I live in Mar Vista. With the exception of probably Ed Reyes and Richard Alicon, I have been the most uh, aggressive, relentless critic of REAP, systematic house inspections, the manager's meeting, and every other aspect of it. But today, I'm not going to come here and say I have a dream, but if I did have a dream, <laughs> my dream would be to support good friends of mine Harold Greenberg and Malcolm Bennett, 
who have worked tirelessly for years to bring this program. In their good hands, I think needy housing providers are finally going to get the character and content through justice and equality, and I'm so proud to stand next to them on this pro program. Finally, I'd like to thank the chair for his generosity to make his housing deputy available to me for several hours to teach me everything I needed to know about housing in Los Angeles. Thank yes. you. So I support this program. Great. Uh, Bill. Oh, yes. Uh, good afternoon, Councilman. Uh, my name is Bill Huey. I'm the president of Fair Housing Coalition. We're a civil rights organization for landlords. We believe in equality under the law for landlords and renters. Um, I support this program, but, but, but the bigger problem, here's the bigger problem. I own a building built in 1929. It's a three-unit building. I live in one of the units. My tenants have been there 18 years. They have procreated. They have four children and a mom and dad living in a one-bedroom apartment. So no matter how much I stay on top of it, the building's overcrowded. It's an older building. It's more delicate. And on top of that, the inspectors come in like it's a Beverly Hills hotel. If they find a little crack in the paint, they want to write you up. If you went into the apartments of my tenants, you think they were storage units. The living rooms have been converted with double beds into apartments. And that's a state violation, but tenants don't get cited when they break the code. But landlords do. I really think there needs to be flexibility. My tenants were paying 400 a month for a one-bedroom apartment in L.A. Then housing cuts it down to 200, and then when they put the money in the rent escrow, they take 50 dollars. So I'm getting 150 dollars a month put in my escrow account. I borrowed 1,400 dollars. I made it improvements. I went to a hearing to get my money so I can continue making improvements, and Helen Morales turned it down. I had an attorney with me, and I had documents from the contractor and receipts, and she said, "No, we're not going to give you the money." So I appealed it and we went before the rack and they have three people on the rack who have a background in suing landlords so we got turned down there this whole thing is is it's there's bad people running this program I mean the program could probably help a few but if a landlord does repairs to his building and comes in with receipts from stores and Osh and has done the plumbing he should get his money they've been sitting on my money for like four years they won't give me a penny and they're collecting my rent the whole thing is is morally corrupt and you got bad people running it you really need to see what's going on and that would fix the problem give landlords their money back when they do the repairs Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Uh, Harold Greenberg for the proposal. Good afternoon, uh, council members. Harold Greenberg, former president of VAGLA. I chair the political committee. I appreciate the opportunity. Most of you have already met. We've discussed various factors. Let's be quite clear. Most owners are not in favor of REAP, the fact that it is known in a trade as rape. And there's a lot of truth to that. But we are in favor of this particular proposal. We've got to understand the situation. We're talking about mom and pops. Mom and pops cannot afford to have 50% of their income knocked out on the units. And for the ability of not getting paid, the industry is charged $50 per month per unit to be in the REAP program. You're basically dooming the owners to failure. You put them in a position where the property becomes substandard and we get uh, Deutsche Bank, we get uh, Bank of America, and that's where the problems are. So what we have done, and we've had many meetings, and I will commend the housing department on this, we are working together to solve the problem. And this is one way. If we can't abolish REAP, then at least provide the funds, and that's what this meeting is about today. There's got to be funding. A landlord without a tenant is bankrupt. A tenant without a landlord is homeless. We've got to understand there is a problem. We've got to work together, and we should not be sitting at opposite ends of the table. Gentlemen, we need your help. I meet once a month with the assistant general manager. I've met with the general manager. Once a week, I work with code enforcement. We are doing it. We're out there working together, we're accomplishing things, and we have a crisis now in the court system. Because of what has happened with the budget crisis, no one is going to get justice. We've got to solve it here, and this is one way. This is the broken window theory, and you're all familiar with that. 
We've got to understand we're in the same boat. We've got to pull the oars together. Thank you, Harold. We have uh, Malcolm Bennett for the proposal. Malcolm, how are you? Good. No, I'm doing great. Good to see you, gentlemen, and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I represent International Realty and the Minority Apartment Owner Association, as well as some of the local ones. Uh, this is a very much needed program. It's really designed to help the Ma and Pa owners. And I can tell you, I have helped so many of my owners personally loan money to help them get out of REIT. Because as Mr. Greenberg said, with 50% of their income gone, they'll end up in foreclosure because they can't make the mortgage payments. So uh, the program has a number of, of, of it's designed with a number of um, safeguards in it so to reduce abuse in the program. This is really designed to help the small owners that really need this. And unfortunately, a lot of the oldest uh, small mom and pop owners, over the years, they really did themselves a disservice by not increasing the rents of their tenants because they were good tenants and they just kept them in there with low rents and stuff. And that's why they can't get institutional financing because the building doesn't debt service and they can't raise the rents because of wrinkles. So they're between a rock and a hard spot. So uh, this is one way that could really help them. And as apartment owners, you know, we've been trying to teach owners the, the responsibility and how important it is uh, we never believe in rent gouging, but you have to, when you have the ability to uh, keep the rents at, at a level uh, so that when you get to this point, uh, and that's where so many of them are, uh, they've just kept the rents low, doing their tenants a, a good favor. And because they're older now, they take more dollars to keep them up, and they're just unavail unable to get that funding. So this program, we... International Realty, the Minority Apartment Owners, and other associations I speak with highly favor this and hope that you will move forward uh, with this. Thank you very much for your time. Gloria Debs, Debs Money. How are you? The second part of your name, Debs. Man. Man, okay. That means I got married. <laughs> Gloria, before Good I got for you. married, so <laughs> My name is Gloria Duckman. I'm the beneficiary of the American dream that Martin Luther King so uh, eloquently uh, presented 50 years ago. Um, I inherited some property in Venice with my brothers from my parents. My parents had a high school education, and my mother had a sixth grade education. And you know what? We were able to buy some property in Venice, a house and in the back, and rented people. And then I was able to go to law school. This is from parents that, you know, were not formally educated. And I bought some property. My property was never in REAP, but there are, I have friends whose property got in REAP for little violations because they didn't correct it in time, and, and there's a 40% uh, administrative fee, and, and they have half their rent, and um, these weren't rich people. These were people who were struggling. Yep. And so I really approve of this program, but, and, and I think tenants should have good homes to live in, but we got to work together. got to work together. I mean, because the, the water go bill goes up. And, and the trash bill goes up, and you can only raise it 3%. That's kind of difficult. And I don't think, you know, I, I, I believe in a rent control <laughs> program because I believe that tenants, I would like to see everybody succeed in America. I really would. But I want to see landlords be able to maintain their property and not be have it go in foreclosure, and particularly elderly, Hispanic, and black people who, who, who really <laughs> – came up through the system who worked, you know, I saw people work. I grew up in Venice, which is really diverse. I saw black, brown, and, and, and white people who were not wealthy work their butts off to keep their property. And, and, you know, through drugs and everything, some of their children lost it. But the people who were made able to maintain it because they don't have educations as great as mine because my parents told me I had to go to college from the day I can remember them speaking. <laughs> so... They're, they're, they're losing their problems in the foreclosure, and I, I, I think this is a good program. I hope that this committee would look into that, the other Thank things you. I've spoken about. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have uh, Dina. <laughs> Dina, I can't read your writing. What is it? Uh, What's your name? Eberly. Eberly. Yes. Okay. Uh, my name is Dina Everly, and I wear two hats. One, I am the landlord outreach contractor for the REAP program for HCIDLA. I also am managing director of the Everly Company. We're a large property management company here in Los Angeles. As a property <coughs> manager, I happen to love REAP. I happen to be a big fan of the program 
and of the systematic code enforcement program. It's a way to have eyes and ears on the building. Um, when you have supervisors, you have on-site managers out there, it's another set of eyes and ears. And it's checks and balances system, and I, and I happen to think it's great. It takes approximately four months to go from initial inspection to REAP. So you would have to, as a property owner, not make your repairs for four months to get there. That said, it, it, you know, it does happen, and it is unfortunate in these mom and pop situations. And I'm the one out there on the ground in the building meeting with these owners, and a lot of them inherited these properties. They're elderly. They don't understand um, how to get the money or how to make the repairs, and they need, you know, they need assistance, which is what I'm there for. But unfortunately, I can't loan them money. Um, I can't give them the money to make the repairs, and I can't make the repairs for them. So this program would be absolutely incredible in terms of providing that opportunity to, to owners. Um, I, I just want to address really quickly kind of what some of the other people had said, which is um, there's been studies made on the REAP cases and the foreclosures and property owners going into foreclosure. And most cases, that happens prior to the building going into REAP. So it has nothing to do with the property being in REAP. Um, I've seen properties where the owners are making efforts, and because the owners are making great efforts and they have a good relationship with the tenants, the tenants do pay their portion of the rent, whether reduced. I even see in some cases where they pay the full rent and don't take the reduction directly to the property owner because the owner is making an effort. So, you know, it, it goes back both ways, but the money would be absolutely crucial to the to the economy. Thank you. Richard Osterstrom. Council members, uh, thank you for allowing us to be here. I am uh, Rick Otterstrom. I am president of the Apartment Association of Greater Los Angeles this year. And uh, we do support this program. You can see we have our representatives here that have already spoken. Uh, so I am just looking from one aspect. And I ask the uh, committee and I ask primarily the staff to keep the program very simple. We're not gearing it up for Wall Street REITs. We're gearing it up for the mom and pops. They're very simple, most of them, very simple people and very afraid of the government and very afraid of financing and all the other things that go with it. And so I understand we have a, an outreach contractor. You just met one of their representatives. They're going to try and help. But if we don't keep this simple so it doesn't scare them initially, they may not ever even try to use it. And there's too many programs that have come through the city of Los Angeles in various ways, and including uh, in the housing department, uh, that go unused, that, aren't, uh, that are potentially good programs like the uh, primary renovation, but get very little use because they're complicated and difficult, and in some cases, economically not feasible. Keep this economically feasible. Keep it as simple as possible. Don't just depend on the outreach contractor. Thank you. Thank you. Sabrina Simmons. Um, I didn't drink the Kool-Aid, okay? And I think that what we need here is to look perhaps a little less at the housing provider and a little more at LAHD, who's changed their name to whatever, for whatever reason, and at the program of REAP. I'm serious when I ask this question right now. Please pay attention. How many of you could tell me right here, right now, what does REAP stand for? What does the R, the E, the A, and the P stand for? Who here knows? Tell me now. Rent. Okay. No one under... Rent. Escrow. Rent escrow account program. Let me say it again. Rent escrow account program. What that means is all of that money that LAHD has been collecting that actually belongs to the money, to the landlord, the property owner, 
is going heaven only knows where. Clearly, a good chunk of it is going to their administrative fees. But the majority is supposed to be coming back to the property owner. So what sense does it make to say, we're going to keep your money, we're going to keep taking your money, but we're going to give you an opportunity to sign up for a 3% loan that you need to pay back in 15 years. Does anybody see a problem with that, or does that make perfectly good sense? Because to me, it does not make sense. Thank it's a you. bad idea. Thank you. Lance Liviano. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, my name is Lance Liviano. I have some property in the Wilmington uh, area. I've spoke here a few times before. Um, she kind of stole my thunder. Um, my point I was going to make is it's like the government taxing you 100% tax and not giving you a refund but then saying they'll lend you money. That's what this program is for. Um, I think if I repeated one more time the problems with REAP, you probably would get sick of hearing it. But it is something that's probably unconstitutional and probably will over be overturned somewhere along the line in the future. Um, if you do this program, I do hope you open it up to all property owners, not just the ones in a REAP. If we do this program as a pilot program, Maybe we can expand that to being all property owners that want to improve the property for the tenants, for the community, and everything like that. So if we are going to take a step in the right direction, I would just ask you guys to consider not just a pilot program for the REAP participants, but also all homeowners that actually have a chance to improve. That's what I leave you with. Thank you. With that. Thank you. Okay. Any uh, comments from my colleagues? Mr. Chair, this, the CLA would recommend that you adopt the August 22nd housing report and receive and file the April 10th report. Okay, we're happy to do that. That removes recommendations to amend the foreclosure registry ordinance, removes the controller's instructions, and removes the recommendation to establish a new fund. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Fine. So, can we move this? Second. As amended, yes. As amended. Yes. And uh, we also have general public comments. Okay. Do we have cards on that? What did we miss? Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, we are prepared. Last comments, last words. Gloria, you're welcome to join us again. Please. letting me speak again. Uh, this time, you know, I worked for building and safety as a city attorney for many years. And I, um, I did their PACE program, which is proven commercial. I remember you <laughs> commercial um, properties. And I don't mind uh, the L.A. housing. Like I said, rent controls needs to be in. But if you have one little thing wrong and you don't get it corrected, and sometimes your tenants won't let you get it corrected. I have a tenant who, who threatened me. Okay, because my brother's, one was out of town, my other brother was getting a fight, so I didn't want him to go to jail. So he threatens me all the time, and I'm a pretty tall, big black woman, you know? <laughs> but I had to bring my six-foot-five cousin over there with me. You know, I brought the police, and he wouldn't let me come in when they were, I was making a repair, until the repairs were done. And then when my, the next time I had to do something, my six-foot-five muscle-bound uh, former football player, cousin came, and then he became reasonable, you know? And, the housing department, if you go to them, they can't help you. It's all really pretty tenant-oriented. It's all very tenant-oriented. They tell you you can go to court, but that costs money for landowners, too. And if you lose, you're out of luck. The housing department needs people that are landlords and tenants and regular homeowners on their board so we can reach some fairness. And, and it's really interesting. In 1978, before November 1978, all of the people are under rent control, okay? All of those are property owners. The rich people that own these big developments, they're not under rent control. And I'm not saying we can't have rent control, but I'm saying you got the, the lowest earning people 
having the greatest at having the greatest responsibility for tenants or for housing. Los Angeles City is responsible as a big city. I, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm renting and so I have to do something, but I, I can't get access. My tenants, I call the housing department because I think my tenants were having prostitution out of the, out of the garage. And can I just finish? And they came, and the only, place, only citation I didn't get was for the garage. They had a bed and then the couch, a TV. I mean, that's, you know, I, I, mean I, I, I have some friends in the housing department, but come on. Give the, the landlords need some kind of help. They need to know that somebody's there for them, and there's nobody in this housing department. They got a new name, but under uh, Mayor Garcetti, who I, I, I like, maybe some changes will happen. I hope so. I hope you really understand that I, I'm talking about Venice, my house gets, my, our property we inherited gets inspected all the time. Where I own in Los Angeles, it never gets inspected. So one's in the ghetto, one's in this beautiful place in Venice. I'm sorry. That's it. Thank you. Okay, that uh, completes our work of the day. Thank you. Thanks for your help. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. We're now adjourned. We're now adjourned. Sure.